Is Spire going to field a fourth car in 2025? Haas and Toyota announced a new F1 partnership. What does that mean? Plus, what drivers are saying about the Roval reconfiguration? <music> Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So there's this rumor that's been going around the internet uh, for the last couple of days that Spire will potentially field a fourth car in 2025. The rumor originated from uh, NASCAR rumors nostalgia on Instagram. And yeah, I know it doesn't sound like the most credible place in the world. It's like NBA Central or, uh, you know, the New York Times Gazette. You're like, all right, you had me in the first half, but something's kind of off here. However, the guys over there that posted this, they definitely have um, really good information. They've been right before, so they have connection. So on Friday, I put on my Big J journalist hat. I was like, let me go out here and be Adam Schefter. It, just kidding. He's not really like a big J journalist. He's just a news breaking guy. Let me be Jeff Gluck. Let me be Jordan Bianchi here. I reached out to a few people that would be in the know. And I was like, hey, have you heard anything about this? And they were like, well, actually, Matt, we have. And I was like, well, dang, should have asked earlier then. So yeah, it does sound like Spire will field a fourth car on a select basis in 2025. Obviously, it is going to be an open car. It will not have a charter with it. How many races will it enter? I heard a couple different numbers. I'm not going to say what they are because, you know, we'll wait until and see how many come out. But it was definitely more than one. It's not going to be a one-off. It's not going to be like a you know, a three race deal. Sounds like it's going to be for multiple races. Um, who's going to be in that car? Of course, it's going to be the big question coming out of out of this. And people are going to have a ton of different theories. I uh, didn't ask about drivers, didn't get an answer about drivers. Uh, so not 100% sure there. But as a connect the dots guy, let's go ahead and connect the dots here. Everybody come in, sit down for class. Let's do some critical thinking real quick. Spire Motorsports, they want to be a tier one Chevy team. Spire Motorsports wants to be a mini Hendrick in a sense. They have a really close partnership or will have a very close partnership uh, with Hendrick Motorsports next season. They had a good partnership this year. Sounds like it's going to get stronger. Uh, so just connecting the dots here, uh, that fourth Spire car will likely be a Hendrick development car. So does that mean Roger Cruz going to get in it? Does that mean that Corey Day is going to make select starts? Uh, I think all of that is on the table, possibly. Obviously, we don't know for sure uh, until an announcement is made, but it definitely feels like this would be a really good spot for, you know, a Hendrick development team. Hendrick, of course, can't field their own car. They've already got four. They're maxed out there. This would give them the opportunity to, you know, test out some guys, uh, give them some cup experience, let them make some cup starts and kind of see where they uh, currently stand. So, We'll have to wait and, you know, to hear more information about that. But it does sound like we will see a fourth Spire car in select races next season. Um, yeah, I, I guess probably me thinking back now, like I should have connected these dots a little bit sooner based on some of the other things I had heard. But, you know, sometimes it's not the quickest thing in the world. All right, switching gears here. I, I hate the term switching gears, especially when we're talking about motorsports here. All right, shifting lanes here. We're gonna talk about Formula One real quick. Uh, late on Thursday night, uh, Haas F1 and Toyota announced a new technical partnership, which will uh, essentially see Toyota give you know Haas some engineering and design help, as well as a racing simulator, and be able to slap their stickers on the Haas F1 car. And Formula One is ecstatic about this, but let's be honest, it's not like Toyota's coming in as a new constructor, not even coming in as an engine supplier. They're coming in as a technical partner to Haas F1, and they're going to do a little bit to get a lot of exposure out of this. And that's fine, but celebrating that while you continue to block the Andretti Cadillac bid is, in my opinion, hypocritical because you're celebrating something that really has no impact on Formula One other than they can be like, well, you know, Toyota's involved in Formula One. Okay. Toyota's involved because they want to do kind of the minimum to make sure that their stickers got on there and then they can use that for, you know, materials and then, you know, continue to tease, you know, Formula One that they're going to come back someday. They're not they're not going to come back as a full time constructor. They spent billions of dollars and never once won a single race. I still think they're pretty scared about that. Meanwhile, you have this Andretti Cadillac bid over here where Cadillac wants to come in as a new constructor. They want to come in and build their own engines. Yeah, the initial bid was to use a customer engine before switching over to their own power unit. But now, of course, that's been shelved. They will, if approved, come in as a constructor with their own power unit. So you're blocking that, which would be really good for Global Motorsports to add General Motors to Formula One. 
And instead, we're going to celebrate adding some Toyota stickers to a Haas F1 car, and it just really seems stupid. So what Haas is getting out of this sounds great for them, right? They're going to be able to uh, do some more stuff that they're not capable of doing. Right now, the engineering team at Haas is really, really small. I mean, heck, even Gunther Steiner was talking about how tight the budget over is over there, and Gene wanted to take uneaten baked beans off of a flight and take them back to the factory to eat them later. Like, what are we talking about here? Baked beans are... 99 cents a can i have no idea uh i'm not british i don't put baked beans on my toast i'm not sure how expensive baked beans are but i know they're not that expensive where you need to take them off the plane with you they're not like an uneaten biscoff cookie uh which is fine to take off the plane i encourage that if you don't eat it take it later it's a nice little snack baked beans though i don't want cold soggy baked beans after i've taken them off a of flight just don't absolutely not now i know the brits are different gene haas isn't british but uh, he, him wanting some mushy beans, that doesn't really shock me in that situation. So, yeah, they're going to get a lot out of Haas, but Haas, eh, I don't know. It's still going to be a Formula One team that's essentially split up over five locations. The two Haas bases in America and the United Kingdom, the Dallara factory, the Ferrari factory, as well as the Toyota outfit, which will be in Germany. So, yeah, they they actually make AJ Foyt Racing look rather efficient with their two split shops that they have in IndyCar, which will be combining to one. Finally, that is a great move for them. Uh, they were running from Texas and in Indianapolis. One car in each dump but now Haas is going to get you know some Toyota money in there which is great does it change anything Nah, eh, not really I still don't think they're going to be contenders yeah they'll be contenders for top 10 probably like they have speed every now and then but they're not about to become you know a team that's probably going to be contending regularly for podiums and definitely not for race wins but hey at least they got some new stickers on their race cars Today's video is sponsored by Lockdown Brand. Head over to LockdownBrand.com today. Check out their t-shirts, their motorsport-inspired apparel, the collabs that they have with various drivers. Their hats are super popular amongst the motorsport community. Use code BREAKHARD10 at checkout for 10% off your order. NASCAR heads to the Roval this weekend, which of course has been reconfigured. We talked about that. It has created a very tight hairpin corner to which Denny Hamlin says is tighter than what they had at the Coliseum. So you're really, really going to have to slow down to get through that corner. And Matt Weaver from Sports Not talked to various different crew chiefs and drivers to kind of get what their thoughts are. If you want to read everything that he got from them, head over to his Twitter account or Sports Not right now. Check it out there. Um, I encourage you to go read that. I'll give you a couple of highlights here because some people just are not happy. We'll start off with Chris Gabehart, of course, the crew chief of the number 11 car. He says, quote, we're off to the new look Roval to see whatever the Smith family has dreamt up for us this time. Yeah. Hey, Marcus Smith and his family are really good promoters. If nothing else, they are willing to try and take risks, right? They did the, the Roval, the dirt track. Uh, they reconfigured Bristol with the multiple banking, which actually is pretty good, contrary to what people uh, out there think. Um, they got North Wilkesboro to come back thanks to a large you know, influx of government money. They're willing to take some chances here. And Atlanta Super Speedway, can't forget that one on the list. And now they've done this, which is certainly something it is designed for chaos alex bowman said quote and turn seven is like making a u-turn on a one-way street it's going to be chaos for sure yeah i think when i talked about this the other day i pointed out and everybody that has eyes can see that they widened corner entry into the hairpin here to really encourage drivers to make that dive bomb up the inside it is going to be chaos for sure especially uh, especially if there's a late race restart and on essentially every restart at the stage breaks or you know if there is a natural caution things are going to get pretty sketchy through there riley herbs had one of the more interesting and funny quotes where he said quote i don't know if you've seen it but they've taken a really bad racetrack and made it worse okay that is certainly something now you did have Kyle Larson say that he actually really likes the changes to it here. Um, Alex Bowman talked about how turn six is essentially a blind corner. So going through there into the hairpin is going to be kind of sketchy. Uh, Denny Hamlin and others have said that when you go out of turn five to turn six, you hit a bump and in the simulator, all four wheels are getting off the ground. We'll have to wait and see if that actually happens in real life. I don't think it will. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, What's left for the Smith family to try? Putting a motocross jump on the racetrack, and maybe this is the first trial for it. I'm kidding. They're not actually going to do that. At least I don't think so. Hope not. I don't think the Toe Links can handle that in the Cup Series. Uh, <laughs> they definitely cannot. But it is going to be an interesting race for sure. 
So tune in on Saturday. You get cup practice, you get Xfinity practice, and we get the Xfinity race at four o'clock and the cup race on Sunday. Yeah, it's the final race of the uh, round of 12 for both the Xfinity and the Cup Series. Things have a chance to get kind of wild out there, especially in the Xfinity race, I think. So tune in for that. Let me know in the comments what you think about uh, the possibility of Spire adding a fourth car, the uh, Haas-Toyota F1 partnership, as well as what drivers are saying about the Roval. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.